Good evening. How is everyone doing this evening? I hope that you are all having a good day and enjoying this beautiful weather. And uh, we've sure been having great weather. I, I hope that you enjoy the heat, uh, but it's been, uh, it's been a, a nice change to the cold weather that we've been having. So I hope that you've been enjoying it, uh, maybe getting things done. Um, so what have you guys been doing during the warm weather? Uh, we have different things going on here at our house. We're uh, doing some outdoor projects and um, planting some flowers, taking care of the lawn, things like that. Um, recently, Simon got a new puppy, so that's been fun as well, training him. So spending lots of time outside and uh, just fun things like that. But I sure do hope that you're enjoying the weather and that you're taking advantage of it. I see a lot of you guys logging in. Glad that you are able to join us this evening. And uh, this evening I'm going to be reading from the book of James. And for the next few um, devotional times that I will be doing, I know we're a uh, pastor myself split that up, but um, the next few times that I'm doing it, I'm going to be looking at the book of James. And I've mentioned it before, how practical James is and one of my favorite books. And actually a few weeks I was, um, we were in James as well, but uh, this uh, evening we're going to start right at the beginning of James and we're just going to spend a few devotional times here in this book and we're going to be reading James 1 and uh, the first um, five or six verses um, that we have here. Uh, but uh, before we begin, uh, we will start with a word of prayer. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful that you are faithful and that um, in the disorder of this world and how things have come to a halt, we're so thankful that you are always faithful. You remain faithful and that um, you're always blessing your children, that you're uh, watching over us, taking care of us. And I pray that we would continue to trust in you, that we continue to find comfort in you. And I pray that you just be with our church family, that you just be with all the different needs that are there. Um, needs of the heart, needs, uh, physical needs, and I pray that you'd be with all those things. And I pray for those that are um, ill at this time. We think of Ian McLean, that you'd be with him and uh, his health situation, Lord. And I pray that you just watch over him and just comfort him, Lord, and just uh, help him to trust the doctors and that you'd give the doctors wisdom as they help him, Lord. And we're thankful for him and his faithfulness, Lord. But I pray that uh, during these days that you just um, watch over him. Be with us now this evening as we take a look at your word, and I pray that we would uh, uh, learn something that we are able to apply to our hearts and that we draw closer to you from it. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So uh, this evening, as I mentioned, we're going to be in the book of James. So uh, just as a bit of introduction, the book of James uh, is part of the general, general epistles. So if you were to look at the Bible, it's broken uh, down into different sections, and um, you can go through the Old Testament and you know, there's major prophets and the poems and uh, minor prophets, um, history, things like that. And then when we come to the New Testament, we have different sections. There's the Gospels, uh, there's church epistles, there's uh, different things. But this is part of the general epistles, and this would be the first one of the general epistles. So this would be uh, letters written to uh, not a specific person or to a specific church, as we see a lot of Paul's letters are but a general letter addressing believers. And it was known that um, as a letter like this would be sent out, that it would be shared with other people. You know, it's not like we have uh, the technology in these days where we can uh, send out a message or a group email or send a link out. Um, this letter would go out and they would know that it would be shared. And that's kind of how it was with the, with the letters that Paul sent as well. But this general letter uh, was well known that it would be shared amongst the believers. So uh, part of the general epistles. So this book is written by uh, James, the book of James. Um, so which James? There's lots of James mentioned in uh, the New Testament. Um, we know that there's James, the brother of John. Um, we, we know them as the sons of Zebedee, or also they were given the name, the sons of thunder. Um, there was also James the Less, the son of Alphaeus, and if you're to read scripture, there's very little known about him. So James the Less, and then there's James the brother of Jesus. 
So uh, based on uh, his writing and things like that, uh, it is it is uh, known that the writer of this epistle would be James, the brother of Jesus. And actually, I find it interesting if you read uh, James one verse one, where it says James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very similar to the opening of the of the book of Jude, where Jude. Um, also mentions and says servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Well, James the brother of Jesus and Jude the brother, uh, Judas the brother of Jesus uh, Christ. They they uh, were known to have written these two books and they both start the book in the same way. They say a servant of God and James says um, as well in uh, the opening he says and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He know he knew Jesus as his Lord. So these, uh, and and is known that um, the brothers of Jesus, they didn't believe Jesus early on in his ministry. They, they came to know him later on, and they became believers later on in their life. But once they knew, they, they didn't look at their earthly relationship with him, but they knew how important the spiritual relationship was. And they put all of that uh, aside, um, they um, they basically said that they're bond slaves, they're willing slaves uh, to Jesus Christ, servants of him. And, uh, you know, family is always the hardest people to reach. And just even Jesus, we see in his life that uh, his family didn't come to him until later on. Um, but we see that once they became believers, that they were all in and they said you know what jesus my lord and they became servants of him so the book of uh james um, was written between uh 45 and 50 a.d is when it's uh thought to have been written and interesting enough um, some people had disputed that the purpose of the book was to um, argue with the apostle paul so um, Paul, in his, um, in his letters that he had written, were very heavy in doctrine and spoke a lot about our faith. Whereas uh, here in James, we read a lot about works. So if you know and you understand, um, the difference was that um, James and Paul both speak about faith and works. And obviously, Paul, the emphasis on faith, James, the emphasis on works. So Paul was basically saying, you know, we're not justified by works. We're not saved by works. Whereas James, his focus being on the works is saying, we are justified. Therefore, we are able to work. We're able to serve the Lord. Um, faith is the root of our salvation, while works is the fruit of our, of our salvation. So uh, James, in a very practical way, it just speaks about, our faith and, and the fruits of it being works. So an important thing to know just about the dates, because people are saying uh, how this might have been written to argue with the Apostle Paul, um, this was written between 45 and 50 AD, which would predate uh, Paul's first letter. So that came before Paul any of Paul's letters had come out. And if you understand the context of the books and you understand uh, the emphasis that they're putting on, that they actually go hand in hand. There's no uh, contradictions, things like that. Uh, James is just focusing on the fruit of our salvation, uh, the works that comes after that. Um, so I had mentioned this before. James is often referred to as the Proverbs of the New Testament. It's a, it's a very practical uh, book, and it's a, it's a help to Christian living. Um, it, it isn't deep in doctrine, like if you're to to read uh, the book of Romans, something like that. Not as deep as other books, but as practical as the book is, uh, James never removes faith from it. Um, as, he, um, as he speaks about the pra practicality, it's all rooted in faith. So in fact, the first three uh, chapters of this book of James is dealing with how God um, tests our faith. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking at this evening. 
And the first one that we see is that God tests our faith by trials. He tests our faith by trials. Uh, so if you're there in James uh, chapter 1, and we'll read the first, um, actually, let's read the first 12 verses uh, this evening, and then we'll uh, look at a couple of these verses. So verse number 1, the Bible says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave and of, of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in, he, in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion is perish of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that loved him. Uh, so in these few, uh, few verses, we had already looked at uh, verse number one, where uh, James introduces himself, and he says he's addressing it to the scattered Jews. Jews. Uh, so we knew that, know that the, the Jews are all over at this time. And um, at the time, and we had spoken how uh, this was, actually I believe it might be dated as the first uh, book written in the New Testament. Um, but it was be at the time that it was written, there weren't many Gentile converts or Gentile churches. Uh, so that's why he would have addressed it as such to the scattered Jews. And um, he gets right into it and he says, And my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. And you, you read something like that and you're like, what? Is, what? How are we going to count it joy when we fall into temptations? And actually, I find it interesting, the similarity. Uh, it kind of goes... Um, is similar to a verse that Paul had written to the Corinthians when he says, uh, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. But here he says, uh, James is saying, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And then he goes on to say in verse number three, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Worketh patience. You know, I think, a, I think most of us during these days, our faith has been working patience. The trying of our faith worketh patience. You know, we've all needed a bit more patience in our lives during these days. But here he's talking about the trials, temptations, uh, various trials that we go through in our lives He's saying, count it joy when we go through these times in our lives, these infirmities, these temptations. He's saying, knowing this, we can count it joy knowing that the trying of our faith worketh patience. You know, God has a goal in our mind, in, in, in mind when it comes to our lives. And we, we, we don't always know that purpose, but we do know that uh, whatever we are going through, it's going to try our faith. Our faith is going to be strengthened. And it's going to be, uh, our faith's going to work patience in our lives. And then look at verse number four. It says, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's, that's uh, you know, it's one thing to read uh, verse number two and say, count it all joy. And you're like, what? How are we going to count it joy? Then he goes on to say, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But then I like what he says at the beginning of verse number four, but let patience have her perfect work. You know, sometimes we we're, we say we don't want to be patient. You know, why do we need to wait on the Lord? Why do we have to go through this difficult time? 
You know, what is the purpose of this? And we try to find out in question, but James here is saying, let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, not in need of anything. You know, we could all say, you know, we want the best for our life. We want God's will in our lives. Well, sometimes that requires us letting um, patience have her perfect work, being patient, waiting on the Lord, letting our faith be tried. And I don't know, maybe you feel like during these days that, you know, you're okay. You know, it's a bit of adjustment. Some things have been put off. Maybe today you're going through some um, real trial and you, you feel like, you know, my faith is really being tried. It's, it's working patience in my life. And I don't, I don't want to be patient. I don't want to wait. But if we really want to be perfect, we want to be entire, we want the best that God has for us, we want to be not lacking anything, like Paul, like uh, James, sorry, James says here, he says, let patience have her perfect work. You know, we can't get more practical than that. We need to be patient. We need to wait on the Lord. And I hope that, during these days, we realize that the working of our faith, the working of our patience, you know, that's that's strengthening our faith. Um, so as we, in the next uh, few uh, devotional times that we spend together, and we look through this book of James, um, we need to remember that um, the works that that come from our lives, the fruit of our of our salvation. Um, it's all rooted in our faith. And we see here that God, he tests our faith. And maybe you feel like you're going through a test of your faith during these days. And, you know, I, I, I find often that um, our true faith, our true uh, spirituality comes true during hard times. And, you know, it's easy to trust God during the easy times, but it's during the difficulties that are our faith is truly tested. But whatever you're you're going through right now, maybe you're okay, maybe you're going through a hard time, just remember that the Lord tests our faith and and we should count it joy when we fall into diverse temptations, when we fall to various um, trials in our lives, difficult times in our lives, because it works patience in our lives. Our faith is stressed, it's put um, it's it's put to the test. And uh, we can allow the Lord to work in our life and we can trust him more. So I hope uh, this has been a help. I hope that as we go through this book of James, as practical as it is, that these will be some very practical lessons for us as well. Um, so uh, just a few reminders before we end this evening. Remember that uh, Thursday night we're going to be watching uh, a missionary video. Uh, this time it will be Brother Michael Mackey, who's pastoring in Quinty Baptist Church in Trenton, Ontario. Uh, so we look forward to hearing an update and a, a Bible encouragement from him. And then be back for Saturday morning as well as, as Pastor um, does the devotional for us, 8.30 Saturday. So we look forward to that. Uh, we do hope that you're doing well. We hope that um, if you have any needs, um, any prayer requests, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd love to be in prayer for you. And uh, as I prayed earlier, be in pray prayer for uh, Ian McLean. He's not doing health um, well health-wise, and um, he's in the hospital actually at the moment being treated um, for um, some respiratory complications, things like that. Um, but he is getting older in age, so just be in prayer for him and that he would just uh, continue to um, stay strong in his race and this life and the He's been an encouragement to many of us, and his faithfulness has been a blessing to me. So I hope that during these days that we could likewise be a blessing to him. Uh, so be in prayer for him, and uh, just be in prayer for one another, encourage one another. And I hope that this evening's been an encouragement to you, and I hope it's been practical, and that we just uh, allow our lives, to, to our faith to uh, be worked in patience. So have a good evening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. God bless.